And okay, cool. All right, so hopefully everybody signed up for uh, stuff again. Uh, I got a, a question from Tess and a couple other folks that were in you know LA or uh, excuse me, uh, um, outside of our area. And so yeah, if you guys were not able to do, um, you know, if, if you if you couldn't do stuff nearby uh, us, if you could, it's okay, it's okay, right? D do the best you can. Um, but now I want to talk about what we're gonna do. Okay, so um, so you guys have your uh, first uh, signups here. So what's going to go on? Uh, next, I want to post, hold on, let me grab the link. Okay, so I just posted two things in there. So the next one I want you guys to click on the next shared sheet is going to be the field data sheet. So don't change anything. Just just click on it, and I'm going to uh, or or you can look at mine. I'm going to share my screen now in a second, so you can see you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to walk you through what we're going to do. Okay, so this this might seem a little confusing. Uh, but uh, you'll be able to do it, no problem. So on this field data sheet, um, you have, and, and this is this is all in a module that's partly up right now, and I'll put the rest of it up after after class. But basically, so we, we you we just we've picked our our target, you know, our first say restaurant we're gonna do, right? So you you have your particular target. Uh, then you can go ahead and look at these field data sheets. So note that we have restaurants, boom, boom, and we have supermarkets, boom, boom. Now the idea here is you can just go here and print this page up uh, and, and take it with you. Uh, and so uh, so this is, this is optimized to be easy to fit on a clipboard. I'll show you how we're gonna enter the data. We're gonna enter the data in, in more you know, row and column format, but, but nevertheless, this is to make it easy for you. Um, but you are not going to turn in these data sheets, right? You're going to submit the data. So this is purely to make it easier for you. So you can you can adjust them or, or print them or not print them at, at however you like. But this is what I want you to note. So we have restaurant and supermarket. And I'm going to click on the restaurant example just to show you how maybe one might look like, look after I filled it out, OK? So I'm gonna go in and this is my restaurant. I go into my restaurant and check it out. I'm gonna say, so this is my name, the name of the restaurant, you know, the day of the week, uh, time, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, obviously I'm doing this in English. Um, restaurant category, this is something we tried for the first few years, it's gotten kind of hard. But um, definitely if you're doing a restaurant that, or a market that we've not done, so you're somewhere in San Diego or whatever, um, you know, uh, try your best to sort of give us an idea. Is this a high-end restaurant? You know, is this like a place you go on a, you know, anniversary date kind of thing? Or is this like a little, you know, cheap taco shop down around the corner? Or is it mid-range, you know, that kind of thing? Um, is it, uh, this should actually say by COVID, not the fires. Uh, 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 what's the cuisine? Is it general American food? Is it seafood? Is it is it Mexican? Is it you know sushi? You know what is it? So we have some sense of what it is. Uh, that we haven't asked this question before. We asked this question when we had fires, but the question is: Has this imp business been impacted by COVID? I suspect all of them have. So just be yes, and and a quick you know couple words of what it is. Like they're they're only doing takeout now. Or something, you know, something of that nature. You know, used to have all this dining, and now they don't, you know, or or whatever. Okay. Now uh, we're new, so we're new restaurants, and then we're gonna do markets. They're very similar, but they're a little bit different. Okay, so here's the idea. The idea is a couple fold. One, one, and you guys can all see my screen now, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me uh, make this a little bigger. Okay. So there's, there's two types of data we're getting. We're getting the items that are being sold right here. We call that the quantitative data. 
and we're getting some idea about people's sense of sustainability. We call this the qualitative data, okay? So I'm gonna go in here, there's a couple questions. The first one, are there any Prop 65 warning signs? This gets to what Loretta was speaking to before, which was, um, we as a proposition in California that said any, any toxic things um, have to be notified. It has to be noticed. That's why when you go to pump gas, there's those signs that say, warning, gasoline can cause birth defects and stuff of that nature, right? Because of what Loretta was asking about, which is mercury was heavy metal accumulation. Some seafood triggers that, potentially triggers that problem level of, of warning, right? So technically speaking, when we go to one of these places, they're generally speaking is supposed to be a warning sign somewhere around. Um, and so the question is, do you see a Prop 65 sign posted? Yes or no? Basically just yes or no. And then uh, the next is, actually I'm gonna pause on that for a second. So the next is you have to talk to somebody, all right? You have to talk to somebody where you're there, masked up and all the good safe distance and everything. But the idea is we want to talk to the wait waiter or waitress, or if it's in a market, the, the, the fishmonger, the person behind the counter that's like of the, of the seafood area, right? And so uh, most of you guys are just gonna talk to one person. You only have to talk to one person, that's okay. Um, uh, sometimes there's multiple people, in which case you can ask a second person. So there's space for a second person's questions. 90% of you are just going to do one person. So, but, so that's okay. So we're going to go, all right, uh, who's this dude? This is waiter one. I'm going to say, hey, uh, hey, Sam, uh, my professor is making me do this stupid project. Sorry, I don't want to do it. My professor's making me, he's a jerk. But so I'm just doing this thing for my school project. And we're, we're talking about seafood in my class. And I'm just wondering, have you heard of MSC or Seafood Watch or or anything related to sustainable seafood? And if they say things like, what? Like, that's cool, you know, it's all good. Answer is no, right? And so, and so if they say, again, all these things, we're gonna take people at their word. We're not sweating people. We're not trying to say people that you're lying or anything like that. So if they say yes, you write yes. If they say no, say no. If they say, I don't know, just put, I don't know. Next question is, so on a typical week, you know, for your customers, how many, how many, if any, ask about sustainable seafood? You know, how many, how many of them ask about seafood uh, related to sustainability? And most of them will probably say things like very few, not many. To help us here, because remember, some of these will be high-end restaurants that get, you know, I don't know, 20 people a night. Others will be, you know, a taco truck that gets, you know, 300 people, you know, a shift, you know, kind of thing. So just simply saying not many or a few, if that's all they say, you got to write that down. But really, we'd like to get a, a quantitative estimate. So in terms of percentage, so not that many, not that many. So you'd say like, you know, 1%, 5%, 10%, and see if you can get a percent from them. If they can't, it's okay, right? But ideally, just just sort of a, a some. If they say some people do that, it's hard for us to know that because we're going to try to turn this into a percentage. Okay, how many customers ask about that? Okay, and then specifically, we're going to ask how many how many people ask about where their seafood comes from. You know, you know what country it came from or whatever. Nobody. Okay, cool. And the last question is, um, if of all the questions people ask about seafood, all this kind of stuff, sustainable, not sustainable, whatever. What's the most common question that people typically ask about the seafood, right? And so this guy said, oh, what comes with that? Or how, you know, how is it cooked or whatever? So that's it. And you're like, okay, cool, thanks. And that's it. So you're gonna ask a couple questions, right? Handful of questions. Um, and then you're gonna turn to, uh, and there's a place here for just general comments. So give us a sentence or two just about this place. You know, look super sketch. People are super nice. People are really curious. People are really interested. You know, that kind of stuff, whatever. Okay, then I'm going to look at the menu. And I'm going to say, uh, 
Okay, here's some seafood. Okay, now uh, also let me say, so seafood, we're using a broad definition. So seafood is any seafood stuff, but, but because it, over the years, it just got hard for people to figure it out. It's any fish or seafood. So um, common things people sell are catfish, trout. Those are freshwater fish. Those aren't um, marine fish, but we'll, but we'll just put them down anyway, because it's just, it's just simpler. So we're doing primarily ocean fisheries, but if it's a freshwater item, we, we include that. Okay. So, and look at the menu. Ah, uh, here's something, shrimp cocktail. In the case of the restaurant, we have to say if it's an appetizer or entree, that's basically to get an idea of if it's a small or a big plate, basically. Um, uh, and then what is it? I don't know, some unknown shrimp, okay? How much is it? It's 6.95. Did it say where it's from? Nope. And so here, here, are, the, here are the common ones, MSC, farm raised, Wild caught, regular wild caught, dolphin safe, or they say something else, or I don't know. So they said something else. I would put a tick here in the comments. I would I would explain what that tick meant. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to the next one. Crab cake roll sandwich. Okay, so it's an entree. What's the thing? I don't know some kind of crab. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so once I get that done, um, the other thing, and so a lot of times it's better to to do this quantitative stuff first. Um, because you're, you're going to have a couple questions, right? So you're going to be able to get most of this down. You might be able, to, the menu might say this kind of stuff, in which case you're good to go. But um, a lot of times it doesn't. So what I would do, can I, say, I have just a couple quick questions. I'm doing this project for my class. Ask, ask Sam these questions, right? Have you ever heard of this? And then tell me about your customers and what they ask about. Then say real quick, so the shrimp cocktail, do you know what kind of shrimp it is or where the shrimp's from? Right? Don't know where it's from. Okay. Uh, uh, do you know, uh, so you don't know how it's harvested? Nope, I don't. So I'm just going to put a question mark there and I don't know. Right? Uh, fish and chips. What kind of fish is it? He told me, oh, it's a flounder. So I'm going to put flounder in there. Do you know where it came from? Uh, it's local, some, somewhere local. Okay, so I'm going to put Southern California. Right? As much detail as they give you or they provide on the menu, or whatever, be as detailed as you can. But, you know, if they just say somewhere in Southern California, you can't do any better than that. Does that make sense? So you're going to jot those down. And the last little bit is just to give us a sense of, you know, relatively speaking, is this a huge seafood place or not or whatever? Just going to tell us what percentage of all the appetizers have something to do with seafood. So is it 100% of the appetizers and 100% of the, of the entrees? We might expect them to know more about the seafood if they're a seafood specialty place. Whereas if there was one seafood item out of a list of 50, right, they're probably not going to know much. So, that, so that's what this is. This is just to give us a sense of how dominant seafood is in their menu. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. So that's the restaurant. Now, the market is very, very similar, very similar, just a little bit tweaked. So if we look over at the supermarket example... I say supermarket, but it's any market. It could be a supermarket. It could be a small market. But same thing before. This is, this is my field data sheet, right? I just put my notes down. So my name, a date, all this kind of stuff. Uh, same questions as before. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There's one other question, which was the, the COVID-19. Or here I made it Cody. All right, man. I can spell really well. Uh, anyway, um, so... So, okay, so Prop 65 signs. And then in this case, instead of the amount of appetizers and the amount of uh, main dishes, entrees, it's what percentage of the meat counter, of all the meat counters dedicated to seafood? And what percentage of the freezer space is devoted to seafood? All right, so the easiest thing there is just a lot of times the freezers or the, or the, um, um, like display cases, you know, there's, there's like a display case, and display case, display case. Just do real quick, like, okay, there's there's three there's three chunks of the display case, and it's in one of them, so I'm gonna call it a third. You don't have to go there super precise and be like 17%, right? This is kind of this is eyeballing it. So in the case of the seafood section or the the frozen section, excuse me, there's you know 
freeze the door, 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 freeze the door. And like two of them are, are, uh, the seafood and two of them, I just say, you know, two out of 10 or something, you know? So the idea is you don't need to spend a huge amount of time, um, you know, getting down to the nth degree. It's just, we want to, want a ballpark about how, how prevalent seafood is in this place. The questions are the same exact ones, right? So, Hey, Hey, fishmonger dude, have you ever heard of, you know, MSC and how many of your customers ask about sustainable seafood and, um, you know, uh, how many people ask where it comes from, where the seafood comes from, and then what's the most common question, right? And just like before, if there's two, if there's two guys there or two ladies there or whatever, you could ask a second one, but you only need to ask one person. And in most cases, there's probably just going to be one person there. Um, okay, so now, now this is a very similar data sheet, but it's a little more detailed because usually we can get more information from markets. So we have a thing called the cool laws the current administration was trying to change them, but I believe they failed uh, as of as of right now. Cool laws. Has anybody heard of the cool laws? And C is capital C, capital O, capital O, capital L. No, I haven't heard of them. Does that have anything to do with the air cooled system that they're talking no. about? No. Okay. No, okay. then I haven't heard of it. Okay, so, so cool is country of origin labeling laws. So this, this movement started in the 90s, but it, it, it passed and got going in late 90s into the early 2000s, essentially, um, actually up to like the 2010s. But, um, but basically the idea was this. The idea was, um, the, well, the original motivation was a buy American uh, uh, thing, right? To support American, um, businesses. So the idea was, okay, if this stuff is grown, if this, if this beef comes from the US, we want to know it's from the US. If it's from China, we want to know it's from China. If it's from Argentina, we want to know it's from Argentina, etc. One of the big problems that we're, we're looking at here with the seafood is if I laid in front of you a carrot and um, uh, some broccoli, and tomato, right? You guys would all be able to look at it and go, oh, that's tomato, right? You might, maybe you don't know the exact variety. You don't know it's beefsteak 14 or whatever, but you know, that's a tomato, that's a carrot, that's a whatever, right? Um, uh, if I put out a piece of chicken and a, a side of beef, right? Most of you would be able to say, nah, that doesn't look like beef. That's probably chicken or something or turkey, maybe chicken, turkey, something like that. And that is right. We'd be able to sort of get an idea. But when it comes to fish, since we're mostly eating fillets and mostly what we purchase in America is not whole fish, we're just getting these fillets. It, it's very hard. It's very hard to know what's up. And, it's, and if you think about that, that's really weird, right? That's really weird. So I say, hey, fishmonger, give me a Give me a fillet of tuna. And he does something, puts it in a wrapper and gives it to me. I assume it's tuna, right? Can I have halibut? Cut something up, gives it to me. So, so because of the nature of fish tissue, and because many of us aren't particularly schooled or experienced in, in figuring stuff out or related to sort of cryptic fish tissue, it's, it's, and even for experts, it's very hard, right? So is it that species of rockfish or that species? You know, I don't know. Um, so, so it's kind of weird that we're we're paying money and and you know and paying widely different prices at times, orders of magnitude more money for one fish versus another fish, but we're just sort of taking everybody's taking it on faith that this stuff is is what they say it is, right? So it's a little it's a little interesting. Uh, it, it's it's sort of it's a bit strange. You wouldn't go in and say. Beer, or why well, maybe you would, but I think Moses wouldn't go ahead and say beer, and then someone's like, here's a $40 beer, here's a $20 beer. And you know, you sort of take it home and it's in the same brown bag and you can't tell what it is. That that's kind of that's kind of weird. So so with country of origin labeling laws, people were saying, like, well, we're getting lower quality beef because people can't tell how the beef was raised, right? So therefore, we in the US have these strong laws, right? These strong health and safety laws, environmental laws, whatever, 
China, Argentina don't necessarily have those laws, right? So it wasn't exactly an eco certification, but it was sort of getting at some of the same things, right? How do you know what is actually in that packaging? So the country of origin labeling movement started. Immediately, immediately, the beef and poultry industry lobbied to be exempt from it. And they were given, uh, at least initially, they were given exemptions. The seafood industry, which is not very powerful, despite even though like we talk about, oh, the seafood, the fishermen are powerful, uh, um, not very powerful lobby as far as lobbies go. Nothing compared to the poultry, nothing compared to the beef industry, for example. And so when the country of origin labeling laws passed Congress, a lot of groups got immediate exemptions. Seafood did not. So seafood has been the, the um, you know, protein that for the longest time has been subject to these country of origin labeling laws. What the country of origin labeling laws say is um, you have to say where the item comes from, if it comes from outside of the US, if, and there's some various constraints, but basically it says, essentially, if you're at a, if, you, if you're a big business, okay, so if you're like a, a Vons or a Ralph's, if you do a certain amount of sales a year, um, you have a certain customer base, um, or you do some import, if you yourself import the items, right? So the idea is if you're a little mom and pop store on the corner, you don't, you don't have to technically have country of origin labeling laws. But like so many things, because many of the say cans of tuna that the, that the uh, you know, corner market folks are selling, it's the same tuna that you're buying in, in Costco or whatever. Um, as a consequence, these country of origin labeling laws have crept into most places. But what it means is country of origin labeling laws don't apply to restaurants. They apply to the uh, selling of, of, of food that you're going to take somewhere and cook. So therefore, it applies to markets. It does not apply to restaurants. So we have a much better sense of where our seafood comes from uh, uh, when, it's, when it's in a market here in, in California than we do when it's a, a restaurant. There's no reason why restaurants you know, could not tell us, but markets, most markets have to tell us, okay? So as a consequence, when we get to this part of the data sheet for the markets, um, same thing before. Okay, here's the name of it. Okay, here's the species. Hokies is a fish from New Zealand. Um, but then there's a couple There's a couple of the categories. First, you see these categories here? First is what type of item is it? Is it fresh? Fresh meaning at the, at the, the fish counter. To be completely clear, uh, almost all the fish you're buying has already been frozen and they just thawed it out before you walked up to the, so mostly it's not, unless you're down at the docks and stuff and that, that's, for, that's for sanitary reasons, that's to keep down bacterial growth. But what we call fresh is, you know, essentially unthawed, unthawed seafood. So it could be fresh. So I put a tick mark there if it was in that one. It could be a frozen. We have two categories of frozen here, okay? So one is, uh, unprocessed. So that would just be frozen fillets, right? Raw, raw fish cut up and just there and put in a plastic bag or whatever. Uh, uh, processed is, oh, sorry, this should be, this should be, I don't know what happened here. There's supposed to be unprocessed and processed here. I'll have to update this. Okay. So fresh is just, fresh unprocessed is just the fillet. Processed fresh would be something like ceviche, right? So it's fresh fish, fresh fish, but um, but they've done something to it, right? They've added some spices, they've gotten it ready for your barbecue, something of that nature. Uh, and then we have the same thing with frozen. Again, just raw naked filet frozen or, or raw shrimp frozen. And then a processed, meaning there's some spices on it. Maybe it's pre-cooked, something of that nature. And the last category is canned. Now, can just means packaged. So, so it could be in a, in a metal can. It could be in a, in a foil pouch. We, for purpose of this, we call that canned. Okay. So these guys, refrigerated, 
these guys frozen and this is just a, a some type of packaging okay and then i'm going to denote whatever the the you, you can forget this count we don't really use we don't really, really use count anymore that, that 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 has to do with the size of things like uh, clams and stuff so basically you just fill out the weight so whatever it says on on the package right 10 ounces of tuna or something and the unit price so that this can of tuna was 895 and then if i look on the back i'll see the label and so this should say because of country of origin labeling it should say where it is. Ideally, it would tell us what region of New Zealand, but, but the law only says you have to put the country. So sometimes they'll put additional identifiers, in which case you should write those down. But at a minimum, they need to say where the country, where the country, uh, what the country is, okay? So I say, this is, this is from New Zealand. Um, and the brand was, in this case, it was Whole Foods. And in this case, they had a processor location. So it was processed. And so where they process it, they process it in Austin. So I know that it came from New Zealand, went first to Texas, and then came to us in California. And then here is, uh, just like before, is there any descriptor of how it was harvested? So MSC, farm raised, wild caught, dolphin, safe, et cetera. In this case, uh, it was MSC. And so I was able to write down the MSC code. Gotcha. Again, for most of this, uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward. The best thing, the, the, the best data we get is from the fresh and frozen section. So, um, so this, so this can, this lightly breaded fish nuggets, right? That's got some bread on it. It's got some fish on it. It's got some butter on it. It's got other things that affect the price and stuff, right? Whereas when we just buy a, a filet, a raw filet, that's the best because that's that's price per pound. So I'm going to put that in the price per pound category. And that's the best because there's no additional cost in there. There's no cost of butter or bread. And it's just a real straightforward, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, obvious um, way to do the amount. It'll be much easier for us to figure out how much it costs and, and effects of harvest method and stuff. Okay. Does that make sense? So supermarket very similar to restaurant it's just we oftentimes have have a little bit more uh knowledge about what's going on in the supermarket and we have this additional category of what form is the is the the seafood in cool cool i'm sorry was there a certain number of products we needed to take down in both the restaurants and supermarket yeah it's all of them got it so you want us to like touch yep. everything in the freezer and not yep. on the shelf? Yeah, well, yeah, basically, yep. <laughs> okay. So to do a restaurant like Avon's is, you know, hour and a half, two hours. So it's a significant amount of time. So you can't just go in for five minutes and get it and bail. I mean, you could, but then you have to come back for another five minutes and another five minutes and another five minutes and another five minutes. So yeah, so this this is one that that um, yeah is is so how we typically do this we I typically assign um, I double students up. So typically you guys are paired up in groups because it goes way faster if you can have a person writing stuff down. You know, so if you're looking at the can and you're like five ounces, uh, lightly breaded nuggets, hokey, right? And that person can be writing it down. If you have to do it yourself, I mean because of pandemic issues and spacing out of people and stuff it's you know it'll be okay um and i'm reducing the amount of surveys you guys have to do consequently but but it if you can bring your sister or your roommate or somebody it actually will go a lot faster if you can if you can swing that um even though i, I suspect most of you guys won't be able to but but yeah it takes it takes some time and so and what i would recommend if, if, if you guys you know, if you're, if you're having a hard time with just time-wise, I recommend going in and first hitting the, the fresh section, doing the fresh section and maybe the frozen section, and then going home and come back the next day and try to do the cans or something. If you guys need a, need a break, so you're not, you don't have to be there for that long a time by yourself. Um, um, my, sorry. Oh. 
I just have a question. Go ahead. You're done. Uh, is is this supposed to be due on Friday? Because the stores, um, I don't know how comfortable I feel being in grocery stores this week for that long of a time. Because Thanksgiving. Yep. So this is going to be due next week. Um, so, uh, and you guys, as with other things with the pandemic, you know, we should talk about this. If you guys don't feel comfortable, I don't want you doing something you, you don't feel safe doing. Um, but this will be due next week. I'd like you guys to do one thing. Uh, it could be, your, it could be, it could be your, your, um, uh, restaurants. Cause those are a lot faster than this. I guess you do one thing by Wednesday this week, just so I can see if you guys have questions rather than wait until the end and see if you guys have questions. So I'd like you guys to do one, one location by Wednesday. It's okay. You can pick whether you want it to be a, a restaurant or a market. And that's just so I can look and, and give you guys guidance about, because there's almost always will be questions about how you type the data in. I have a um, question about restaurant data. Yeah, yeah, Emma, yeah. Um, so for, at least for Los Angeles County, it is looking like we're going to be going into um, like a lockdown for restaurants. So we won't be able to actually go inside of the restaurant. Um, is that something? That's not a problem. I mean, as long as you can get the information from their uh, menu and you can talk to the folks. So you can't you can't just look at like an online thing, right? Because you got to ask them about how many customers ask about this kind of stuff. Okay. But as long as you can do it from outside or, or call. Um, so the, what I would say, and this always applies, pandemic or not pandemic, the, uh, the, what I strongly encourage you guys to do is to um, do this not at, I mean, I don't, who knows, everything's so weird these days. I don't know what rush hour is, right? But generally speaking, Friday night dinner, I wouldn't probably do this survey on a Friday night. You know, when the, when the wait staff is just running, you know, freaking out and running it all around, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I would, it's ideal to go like more like mid afternoon or something when that's, you know, kind of slow and you can, you can bug them for, you know, four or five minutes kind of thing. Um, but, but that's going to be, again, I, it's, um, it, it's, I, I don't know what's busy these days, or what's not, but it, where you can pick the, the non busy time, that'd be great. And if you just wanted to, you know, stand outside and ask them the questions or whatever, that's, that's cool. You don't have to be inside as long as you can get the information. As long as again, you can anything that's unknown, anything that's question mark, you can ask. And again, if I'm if I have like these, if I have 20 things and I say, hey guys, I just gotta ask you a question. I have a couple questions here. I'm doing this project for my school. Um, do you know what kind you know what what kind of shrimp the shrimp is? Don't know. Okay. Do you know where it comes from? Don't know. Okay. Do you know where the so in the fish tacos? You know what, what fish is it? It's fish. You know, I mean, if, if you're getting that kind of answer after three or four asks, I'm just gonna say, okay, they're they're not gonna tell me any information, right? And so I'm just gonna put down unknown, I don't know, and do you know what I'm saying? So so you don't need to tick anybody off, right? You don't need to, to make anybody angry or or whatever. Um, but you wanna again, the idea here is if I go to this restaurant, can and I want and you're gonna buy some food or buy some fish from the fishmonger, is he or she able to answer my questions? Very simple, I'm not trying to distract him or her, right? Not trying to be a pain in the butt, but I wanna know, how was this fish, what is this species of fish in this fish stew, right? If they get ticked off and like, I don't have time to talk to you, okay, you know, right? You know that this is not a place where you're gonna be able to exert some kind of rational evaluation, right? And so that's, so you, so try, what I'm saying is you need to try, but if you're hitting a wall, you know, you don't need to stay there for 45 minutes and say, my professor said, you have to tell me what the answer to the shrimp is, right? It's, it's just, uh, we're, we're again, if we were an interested person walking off the street, could we understand what's being sold here? Cool. Cool. So I'll show you guys one little, well, we're almost out of time here, but um, here, let's let's look at this one. Can you guys can you guys see this? Yep. Okay. Yep. So here's a here's a this was this weekend at the store. So right, all these guys, you have to write all these guys down, right? 
And I understand that's a lot of stuff, right? So write these guys down and um, I'll write these guys down, right? Which is why I say it takes time. It, it, this is this is a exercise that takes some time. So, so if I'm gonna do this guy, I'm gonna pull it off shelf. I'm gonna write the product name down, the price, 9.99, the, the weight, you know, this is blah, 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 smoked salmon. Then if you flip it on the back, usually there's gonna be some info and it's gonna say, uh, so this one's from Maine. Where am I? Okay, so this one is uh, from, from Maine. So product of Duck Trap River, Maine. So there you go, wow. Duck Trap, so it's near the mouth of the Duck Trap River in Maine, great. So I got that down and uh, it says, uh, so astaxanthin is a, is a stain. It doesn't say anything else, but it says Atlantic salmon right here, okay? So I'm not gonna put salmon down, I'm gonna put down Atlantic salmon. And it says astaxanthin, a carotenoid uh, used as feed on farm raised salmon. So this is farmed salmon. Okay, so I know this is farmed, Alaskan salmon, and it's from Maine. And the weight and the price. Cool? Dr. Abe, <clears throat> so, is it cool if we tweak your method a little bit and just look up, like, like I know Walmart and stuff has like grocery pickup and it mm -hmm. has pictures of these things. So instead of going in, you can just yeah, as much as you guys can do that, that's cool. As long as, but here's the only deal though. So that, that's totally fine. As long as they're actually selling stuff, right? Yeah. So if they have a hundred things on the website, but they only have five things available, I would only write down the five things that are available. So if it's sold out on that day that you're looking at it, it's, you know, it's not available. And so that's okay. So, uh, so as long as you're able to, to, say that this is really being sold and the price today, um, that's okay. You, you can do that. Cool. And I would, I would just put there in the notes, I would just say, I did you know, most of the survey virtually. And then I just asked you know, the guys a question for five minutes or something, you know, you know what I mean? So, so, things, so some, some stores will work that way, Catrice, but others like Albertsons and stuff, it, probably won't because there's, they, they had list some of a few of the things, but there's way more things in the store. But as much as you can do that, and, I, and again, I think with restaurants, that's probably most restaurants are gonna have their stuff online. So I think you can probably do that with the restaurants, much more so than the markets. But as much as you can do that, that's cool. Yeah, I know that I'm not very comfortable with doing this very high touch during COVID. And I think I signed up for Albertson. So how would you recommend I maintain social distancing during this project? Yeah, so if you guys don't feel comfortable, don't. I don't second do that, it. April. <laughs> don't do it. So um, uh, yeah, I guess. Um, with with these, I, I get, uh, sorry. Oh, with these like packaged and branded things, they should be standard enough to get a picture of it, get the price that they're selling it for, and and figure out the other information from how they get it. Unless they really do vary, like you had this duck trap thing that you were holding, I had all that information from Duck Trap's website. Yeah, it, uh, of course. Again, it's going to be it's a matter of how. So we've never done this in, the, in a pandemic before. And so um, generally speaking, I think it's faster to do it in the rest, I mean, in the, in the market, right? Just because you're there, flip it, look at boom, boom, boom. But, but you know, however you guys can get it, as long as it's the real data, that's good. Um, if, if it's like, you know, referencing generic stuff where they generically get, the, get their salmon from, right? We wanna make sure that that's really the same as on the package. And so, so as much as as much as you can make that work, that's cool. I just I just don't know how much the website um, background information. I suspect I suspect the availability and the price are are current. I don't I don't know if if an, in the pandemic you know people have been getting toilet paper from different places and beer and stuff from different places and everything. I I, I don't know if they've updated their websites to reflect their their new supply chains. I, I just don't know. I just don't know. 
So as much as you can, you can do that, go for it. I just say, we wanna make sure it's reflecting the, the reality inside. So, um, so uh, if you guys uh, don't feel comfortable and it's, it's totally okay, I'm not trying to make anybody uncomfortable or feel weird or anything like that. So if you guys don't feel comfortable going to your restaurant or, or, um, or uh, market, do me a favor and go flag that or those on the signup sheet, and I'll I'll have to figure out a way uh, of some alternative assignment for you guys. So um, so that's okay, but just let me know that you know you guys aren't aren't going to be doing that site or those couple sites or whatever. Cool. Do you want us to flag those two if we um, we're part of the people that live far away from the counties and we just wrote in our own? Uh, if, if anybody, yeah, so, so you guys put down your sign up things just, you know, half hour ago. If for any reason you guys think you don't want to, you don't feel safe doing this, it's totally cool, but just let me know that. Like, so just, just flag it yellow or something, right? So, because we, we have people signed up for it and I just want to have a sense of, of how many people need alternative assignments, basically. So don't delete your name, but just, just flag it. Okay, so they're all standardized. We can just highlight like yellow, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yellow. Yeah. So so if so everybody should have signed up now for you know a couple different sites and markets and in restaurants. If you guys know, you know, you know what, I'm just not I just don't feel comfortable doing this, or it's you know, for whatever reason, you don't have to tell me why it's so it's cool but do make that whole row yellow so i can um get a sense of how many folks need alternative things cool yeah sounds good all right rock and roll so um i'd like you guys to do uh so the last thing i know we're, we're just about out of time but the last thing i just want to show you is um so this is how we enter the data here and so Note, I have a market qualitative, market quantitative, restaurant qualitative, restaurant quantitative. The qualitative is just the questions, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna type in my name and I have some example, some you know, uh, you know, previous students data. So, so here's the name of the place and the city and all this and that. And then I've, I've put in the answers to these questions, that, what did they say, et cetera. So this is the qualitative part, the question part that on this sheet, I'm, and so for, for the qualitative, there's one row for each restaurant or, or each market or whichever, okay, one row, because everything's gonna fit on that one row. In the case of the market, or excuse me, in the case of the quantitative, there could be one item, there could be 50 items, right? So, I'm, so each row corresponds to one of those items. So I'm gonna type my name in, put the information in, all that good stuff, and then, and here's, here's the first one. The first one is tiger shrimp. Next one, bass, swordfish, et cetera. Or, or yeah, product name is ahi, tuna, tap, tilapia, fillets, et cetera. Everywhere where I put an X on my data sheet, I'm just gonna put a one. So instead of an X, I'm gonna put a one. And things that I didn't check, I'm just gonna put zero. And just fill them in that way. Processor location, I don't know. I'm just gonna put a question mark, et cetera. Um, and then I'm just gonna type all my stuff in and then copy my name and you know, paste all these things down. So we have the same date and the same time, et cetera. Cool. So if you guys could do one business and the easiest thing is gonna be probably do a, you know, a restaurant. If you could do one business by Wednesday and type it in into this communal data sheet, that'll let me know if you guys are doing okay or if I, you need, need more help or what, or, or what have you. I have a question. Yeah, Dana. Um, if we have our names highlighted on that um, on that spreadsheet, how soon after you take a look at that are you going to assign us a new alternative assignment? I'll, I'll think about it today. Okay. Yeah, also, quick question. Yeah. I, yeah. I work eight to eight, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so I probably won't have a chance to swing by any places by Wednesday. So that. Is that a super big deal or is it something I can just work around? Uh, you can just work around it. I mean, mostly it's so I, I want you guys to, 
enter stuff sooner because you'll usually have a couple questions rather than wait until like the hour before it's due and then everybody's freaking out. So I just picked Wednesday. I would have made Friday, but it's, it's, you know, Thanksgiving and stuff. So I was trying to get you guys to do it before Turkey day, but, but as soon as you can. Cool. It doesn't look like it's that difficult, so I'll probably be able to figure it out. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Thanks you guys. So we're, we're going a little long. It's almost 11. So I'm going to stop our recording. Um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll think about this. I'll, I'll look at what's going on. I have office hours in a minute, but I'll, I'll, I'll look at this and I'll post for the folks that, that need some alternative assignments. I'll, I'll try to figure something out. Um, and, uh, other than that, keep cranking. Everybody have a good Turkey day. Uh, stay safe. Uh, if you, if you go into a store and you're like, F this, this isn't working. Nah, 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 it's okay. Right. You can back out and you could just, you know, Hey, Dr. A, sorry, I, I needed another assignment. I, I went to this place, but it didn't look, I didn't feel good or whatever. I don't want anybody doing anything that they, they don't feel safe or isn't safe. Cool. All right, people. You guys be good. I will see you all soon and uh, have a good Turkey day. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. A. Thank you.